Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here, and welcome to the continuation of the 100% walkthrough for Doom Eternal. Thank you guys so much for all the lovely comments, the likes, and the views on the videos so far. In this video series, I've been showing you through all the missions and showing you all of the secrets and collectibles you'll need in order to get 100% by the time you finish. Right off the bat, Mission 5 has a ton of collectibles, is a very complicated level overall, Right off the bat, near the very beginning of the level, you should notice a very obvious codex page entry, so make sure you pick it up before you move on. This level also has three mission challenges. One is for getting a weapon upgrade, one is for getting both of the gore nests, the secret encounters, which we'll need to do anyways, and the other is for doing three unique glory kills on pinkies. There are about three or four pinkies in the level, and then there are a couple in the Slayer Gate. So you don't have too many chances. If you do fail on a glory kill on one of them, we'll be restarting from the last checkpoint just to be safe. You'll come into the first area. You may notice an extra life one up directly in front of you, but you won't be able to grab it until later on in the mission. So we're going to ignore it for now. There are a ton of enemies. Take them out in whatever, uh, you know, play style you desire. Use those rockets, those chainsaws. You guys know the drill by now. You don't need me when it comes to the battles. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is that at the end, there will be a pinky, and I'll rejoin you with commentary in terms of exactly what to do with it. So once all of the enemies are cleared, a small cutscene will start with a pinky, and what we need to do is get a glory kill, three unique glory kills on this enemy type. So we need to make sure we don't accidentally kill this thing. The thing I found to be most useful is to use the combat shotgun and make sure you're shooting it on the front, right on the head as it's facing you. This doesn't do much damage, but that's kind of the point. We want to keep this thing alive as long as possible. Now perform a glory kill on it. There are three different types of glory kills we can get. One from the front on the head, one from the back on the tail, and one from the side on the arm. So pick one of these three, remember which one you did, and do the other ones later. I started off with the tail as I think this one's kind of the hardest. Then just pick up ammo, any type of armor and health before moving on to the mission objective. Directly in front of you as you enter the door, you should notice a very obvious codex page. So make sure you pick it up before we move on. Then what we can do is hop on these walls and at the top, there are actually two ways to go. If you jump kind of across and then just get up to the top, you'll enter a small room with a couple of really simple enemies. Feel free to use your chainsaw here if you want to build up some ammo. But in this room, there is a mod bot. So make sure you interact with it and equip a mod. I would personally recommend going for something on the Ballista since it's a brand new weapon and I found that the Arba Arbalest is a really good and high DPS weapon as long as you can hit your shots. The actual like explosive bolt on it travels quite slowly and in terms of moving targets you often miss. So uh, and also as you can see right here if you hit a small enemy with it it'll go right through them and then it won't explode on impact it'll explode kind of behind them after it goes through. Uh, jump through to the other side and take out all of the enemies in this room and the next room and I will rejoin you with commentary before we move on uh, there are some things we want to grab.
Once all of the enemies are cleared, let's ignore the main objective for a bit and go between this purple and greenish blue store. And if you do that, you'll be able to melee a wall that leads back to where we came from. Do that, and then you'll notice that the extra life is directly in front of you, and you can double jump onto this platform. Once you do, it will lower and reveal a second pinky. We're going to use the same strategy as before, and we're going to fire that combat shotgun directly at its face to make sure we're not doing too much damage so that we can get it into a glory kill position. Then we're going to select a different type of glory kill from the first one we chose. So since I did the tail, at this point I'm going to do the head. Sorry for the little frame rate jump, my capture card acted up right there. Now once we kill that pinky with a second different type of glory kill, enter into the cave where it came from to unlock a secret with some health and rockets. Additionally, a second wall will open up just behind us with a Praetor suit point. We'll want to also pick that up, that's a secret but also a collectible needed for 100% exploration. We can now head back into the room we came from, and we can work our way towards the objective. In order to get to the objective, what we'll need to do is get to the top floor. And I'm just going to scout right here real quick for some ammo to make sure I'm set. But you're going to use the swing bar in order to get to the top here. Once we get to the top, do not run forward and drop down. Instead, turn around, look up behind you, and then double jump onto this ledge. This is super tricky as you really can't see it unless you have it on your map. You'll maneuver around, collect a bunch of rocket ammo, and find a collectible toy. If you notice some really small continuity errors in the gameplay, it's only because I Frankenstein this video from several different playthroughs. But don't worry, everything is in this video, but I had to do it that way to make sure that happened. Nonetheless, drop down the hole and you'll be noted that there is a buff token that is buffing all of the enemies. It makes them faster and I believe it makes them damage you more. But basically you're just going to keep killing them until four or five green portals open up in the middle of the area. That's what you're waiting for. But as soon as they open up, you're going to start running through them. The order you run through them doesn't really matter. So just keep running through them and ignore whatever is in front of you until you get to the buff totem. And when you get to the buff totem, melee it to destroy it. And now you don't have to worry about all of the enemies respawning and being super powerful. So here I went through a portal. There was a Praetor point. I'm going to ignore it for now because we'll come back to it. I go through the second portal, there's some ammo and armor. Again, I'm going to ignore all of that and go through another portal here. Eventually, I'll find the buff totem and I'll take it out. At this point, I can take care of all of the enemies and I can wait for the portals to mop all of this stuff up in this room after I'm done. It's a lot harder to try to keep track of exactly what you're doing. Now, I'm going to go through all of the portals just to kind of close them down. Uh, there are collectibles that are on my screen, but don't worry, we will get to them. Uh, and as soon as you go through all of the portals and link back to the middle, the middle portal will open up. Do not go through this portal. At this point, I'll recommend going for all of the collectibles in the area. So feel free to open up your map if you want, but if you kind of go to the diagonal from where that portal is, you should be able to find two tentacles that are protecting a Praetor suit point. So we're going to pick this up. You would have seen this on your screen already, but again, for simplicity's sake, we're getting all the collectibles after the big battle. From the central portal again, there is a second collectible here, and that is the Secret Encounter Gornest. Here, I would highly recommend using your rockets as well as your ice bomb. Feel free to level your ice bomb if you think it might help you. It did help me quite a bit. Now, what you're going to get is you're going to get a Mancubus on your screen. Actually, two of them. And you need to take them out quite quickly, and they can take a lot of damage. So I would recommend using your Ice Bomb, and then locking on with that rocket, and just destroying them to the best of your ability. Try to not do gore glory kills, as I found that uh, it makes it take a little longer. I didn't follow my own advice, which is why I almost didn't make it. If you are successful, you will complete it. If you're unsuccessful, either try it again, or load your last checkpoint, so that you refill your ammo and armor. And once that gore nest is done, we can now head through that portal in order to find the yellow gore key, which will link us back to the central area through a newly opened yellow door. And instead of going to the left, go to the right up the lift to find a rune. 
Here, you can pick whichever rune you like. I find that rune number seven is very useful. It allows you to go into slow-mo while in mid-air, as long as you're aiming with that left trigger. And uh, I'm going to replace it with number two there. Uh, I end up using this quite a bit later. It, it can be useful sometimes, but if enemies are moving a lot too, it can be a little bit hard to aim. Um, so, you might want to keep that in mind. Drop down towards the mission objective, and you'll enter this large, large area. There will be a ton of enemies here, so I'm just going to take care of them for a little bit. And I will rejoin you with commentary once everyone on the screen is dead. You know the, the best drills. Use that flame belch, the chainsaws, the ice bombs, the frag grenades. This, in this level, I noticed that switching between the frag grenade and the ice bomb a lot was pretty helpful because that recharge, uh, they, they don't share the same recharge. So uh, I found that it was a pretty useful strategy. In the kind of center of the map on the top, there is an onslaught. Onslaught gives you four times damage, which basically means all enemies die in one hit. Additionally, near the center, but closer to the ground, there is a supercharge, which allows you to uh, get all of your armor and all of your health back. You may want to use this. We do come back to this area later on, so you can save it for later if you want. Uh, if you're not struggling, I would recommend not picking it up. Uh, once you complete the battle, though, I'll rejoin you with commentary. With all of the enemies taken care of, I'm going to show you where you can find a secret in this area. If you miss it, this one's actually fine because you do come back to this area. But look towards like the main objective and down into the left, you'll see a small hole. You can dash and melee your way into here to find a secret. And once you pick up that uh, question mark, you will get a cheat code. I actually don't remember which cheat code exactly that was. And the uh, text on my screen is too small for me to read while recording. Nonetheless, uh, if you go back now to the main objective, you will be able to enter the inside of this giant gore nest. So that's what we're going to do in order to proceed with the mission. As you can see, we just put the yellow key in the yellow hole. There's also a blue and a red key, and that's kind of what the whole point of the mission is, is to get those. You'll teleport inside, and in the first room you enter, there is a swing bar and a one-up. They aren't really like perfectly lined up, so you'll probably need to double jump or a dash into it and make sure you pick up that extra life before moving towards your objective, and that is to jump down the elevator shaft. Once you jump down the elevator shaft, you'll round a corner to your left, and a bunch of enemies will spawn, including a mancubus and a new enemy type called the Spectre, which basically acts like a pinky, 
but it is invisible. You also can't uh, lock on your rockets to the Spectre because it's invisible, but using an Ice Bomb on it is very effective if you have it. Also, these shield guys are so annoying. They are my least favorite enemy type so far in the game. Uh, take out the Spectre. I'll rejoin you in like 10 seconds. Before dropping down the second elevator shaft, make sure you walk up to the Sentinel. This one's very obvious, but you can miss it if you drop down. Now, one thing I might have not mentioned before is that you need both of the slots in the same category to actually unlock that ability. So you might want to keep that in mind. The thing is, each ability has like different routes. So if you're really like health or really like armor, you're going to have to end up splitting your points. If you get full armor, full health, or full ammo, you will get an achievement for doing that, but it's also going to make your game harder, and there's plenty of opportunity to grab that achievement later on. We'll have a ton of crystals to go, and I'll actually be unlocking some crystals, quite a few of them, near the end of this video. Either way, after you get that upgrade and, you know, work on whatever playstyle it is that makes you happy, Go down the elevator, kill a bunch of enemies, and then you'll notice the chain gun directly in front of you, hidden behind a case. We'll need a key to get in. And what you want to do before leaving this room is make sure you grab the codex page entry, which is just behind the chain gun. We end up coming back to this room, but better safe than sorry, let's grab it on our first time through. Then we can head towards the objective and end up in this hallway. A ton of enemies will spawn, and some enemies will spawn off in the distance, kind of uh, at the far end of the room. Try to keep them alive. There is something we want to do with them. Basically, you just want to make sure that you end this fight with lots of ammo. So get that chainsaw going. Do whatever you want in terms of killing these enemies. But if you want to make your life easier for the next objective, have lots of good ammo left over. So like I said, we wanted that ammo, we are going to grab it using some glory kills, and we're going to unlock the rad suit. This basically just allows us to walk on some of this toxic sludge without taking much damage. Make it to the next room, and you'll notice that we have to break through a grate. Before doing that, there is a collectible in this room. Go underneath it following the toxic river, and at the end, you'll find a sentinel battery. So make sure you pick that up, and then navigate back to the room we came from. There's some chainsaw ammo here you might want to grab, and I believe there is a power-up to refill the rads on your suit. You may want to grab that just to not take damage from the toxic sludge. Go on the swing, melee your way through the hole, and we're on to the next room. As soon as we're in that next room, round the corner, you should see a supercharge directly in front of you. Refill that armor, refill that health, and hopefully you have lots of ammo. Stuff in your rocket launcher and plasma gun will be useful. Jump across and to the right, you'll notice that there is a gore nest. So we're going to switch, we're going to have the two weapons ready, rocket launcher uh, and plasma rifle, and we're going to have our ice bomb. As soon as you use the gore nest, use the ice bomb and kill the mancubus as quickly as possible with three or four rockets, however many you require. Then jump down and start plasma rifling all of the enemies down here. I found that having the overheat was also very helpful in order to get lots of enemies to die around me very quickly. I was able to do this with quite a few seconds left over, and once you complete it, a portal should open up that brings you back up to the gore nest. Now, looking at the gore nest, turn 90 degrees to your left, and you'll notice that there is a toxic waterfall. Double jump and dash to this waterfall, and around this corner, we can find an extra life. Then, we'll want to quickly double jump and dash back to the gore nest. From that gore nest, which is no longer there because we beat it, look right and, to the, and down. And there will be another toxic river here. Follow the river to another secret. Here is a toy for the Revenant. And then double dash to the teleport to bring us back up to the gore nest. Then we'll need to use the climbable wall to get above the gore nest where we can find our red uh, gore key. Now as soon as you enter this next room, there will be your third pinky. There are a couple of left in the mission, but there is the mission challenge we've been going for. So try to get your third and unique glory kill here. 
Again, I'm going to be using that combat shotgun and using those sticky bombs on its head. That doesn't do a lot of damage, but that means they're always going to open up for that glory kill. The third glory kill for me was the side of the body. Again, there's one for the tail, one for the head, and one for the side of the arm. Once you get the pinky done, before leaving the area, drop down into the river and go to the left following the toxic sludge towards a Praetor suit point. Again, sorry that some of these clips are kind of Frankenstein together. Hopefully, uh, the clips are nice and smooth. Directly in front of you, now that we have this red key, you will unlock the chain gun. Once you grab it, you'll fall down a hole and encounter this enemy. No idea what they're called. Someone in the comments who is much more into Doom than me in terms of the lore will probably let me know. After you kill that enemy, it'll open up a portal, walk on through. We're back into the chainsaw room, go to the left and follow towards the mission marker. We can now go through the red door that leads to the heart in the middle of the room. Interact with the controls and then a room on the left will open up. Go in that room and interact with the controls again. Unfortunately, the room on the right will not open up because of video game reasons. So we will need to do a whole bunch of things in order to get to that room for the rest of the mission. So we're going to head back now and there will be a link in that direction that opens up because of what we just did. So if you come out of that room and go to the left, this is a new area where we haven't been yet. A whiplash will come out, so take make quick work of them and some shield enemies will also come out. Feel free to use your chainsaw on them to regain some uh, health, armor, and, uh, and ammo. And then we can move on into the next uh, room. And in that next room, there is on auto map. Auto maps, again, like I've been saying, they're optional, but very helpful to have. So why not pick it up? They're usually pretty, uh, you know, right on the path of the level. A couple more enemies in this next room. Take care of all of them until the portal opens up. Do not go through the portal. Once it opens up, though, there are things to do. Once all the enemies are down, the gate to the back will open up. Push the key button to open up the portal door. Instead of going through the portal, look to the right of it where another door opened up. Follow this hallway to a mod bot. Uh, interact with the mod bot. Uh, there's a secret here. Feel free to upgrade what you want. We did just get the chain gun. Not a bad idea to upgrade it. In my opinion, the mobile turret sounded a lot more useful than the energy shield. But I don't know. We'll find out later on in the game if that was the right choice for me. Go through the portal, and this will bring you to a big open area. Don't worry about the enemies here. All of them are buffed because of the totem, and they're going to kill you. So we're just going to go straight for the totem. Run past everything. Go through this hallway. As you jump down, there will be an extra life one up, so make sure you grab it. Then, as we're down here, you can hit the man cannon to bring yourself up, and the buff totem should be here directly in front of you. Not many enemies to kill, but there are a few, so take care of them. Once the enemies are dead from where the buff totem was, if you take a leap forward, you'll notice a spinning platform. Uh, to the right of that is a breakable secret with some armor, and then we'll be able to swing across this large gap. Um, I failed on my first attempt, but if you double jump and then jump off and dash, you should be able to make it. You'll notice a push block here. Don't push it yet. Instead, grab that Praetor suit point. And as always, you guys know the drill. Feel free to equip those points while we're here or equip them later. Grab onto the block, turn around to get onto this ledge we wouldn't have been able to grab onto. And then a little bit of platforming through these fire chains in order to make our way towards our objective marker. Now, as you approach the objective marker, don't. <laughs> Instead, go to the left and then you'll locate a sentinel battery. These batteries, we actually haven't used them yet. I'll explain exactly what they do at the end of this video. 
instead of breaking through the green door, we can now also jump across the entire section we were just at in order to find a secret. I believe this is an album for uh, Doom 3? Yeah, it looks like it's Doom 3's album. And then we can jump back from where we came. This jump's a little bit more difficult, but hopefully you make it. If not, it's totally fine. Just go around and come back the way we came. You'll come through the breakable door and there will be a rune directly in front of you. Pick the one that looks fun for you. I'm going to go with number 8. Even though I'm not going to equip it, it sounds like it might be useful later on in the game. So it's better to have it than to not have it. And that rune should equip automatically. At this point, you'll just want to push to the next room and kill all of the enemies inside it. Don't worry, it's not a very big battle. There's only about maybe 10 enemies. Once all of the enemies are down, we're going to have to jump down into the toxic sludge to find a little button. And once we click that button, it'll kind of link us to the other area here. I kind of forgot where the button was for a second there. Uh, but push the button, and then it'll open up the teeth that I was just talking about. Now there's a little bit of platforming to do, but there's also a collectible along the way if you want that full exploration. Go forward to the right, and what we'll do is we'll have to jump down into the left and then double dash onto the wall. This is a little bit hard to notice, but not too hard to execute. Then turn around and go from wall to wall. Turn around again, go from wall to wall. Turn around again and wall to wall. And instead of leaving the area towards the mission objective, turn around and you'll notice that there is a small ledge here. It's a bit of a balcony with a pretty obvious Praetor suit point. You'll want to, uh, you know, as always, use this point. And now we are ready to continue moving on from this location. We can jump to that ledge to leave the area. As you enter this room, the blue gore key is just around the corner. So kill all of the enemies, enter the breakable room, pick up the gore key, and we can exit out. Now, as soon as you exit out, I'm pretty much going to ignore all of this stuff. None of it is particularly of interest to us, and that includes the Toxic Sludge River. There are some tentacle arms, there are some enemies. I'm going to run to the very end, and then turn around and kill the Mancubus. The Mancubus is what keeps the door from uh, opening up. So, we're going to kill the Mancubus, and then the door behind us should open up. For some reason, it took its sweet time on my screen. And I got really confused as to why it wasn't opening up, even though the little lever on it was green. So I ended up kind of running back into the toxic sludge. And by the time I turned around and the door opened, there was a revenant pretty much already inside here, pretty, you know, trying to kill me. So uh, there will be a revenant outside of the door. Hopefully you don't get as unlucky as I did. And some small cannon fodder with another blue gore key in front of us. So link back. This will bring us to a secret, so grab this secret. I believe this is another album called Wolf 3D. And then there is another blue uh, door that will link us back to like this first area. With the blue Gorky, this is all optional. You could have easily skipped this or missed this if you weren't paying attention. You can link back to the top center, and there is a secret. If we take the booster pad and look into the corner, we can find a collectible toy. Then what we can do is go on this wall and we'll need the booster pad again. I don't believe any of this is mandatory as part of the mission as we could have linked back to the big battle area without doing all of this. So we're gonna now go through this door with the blue gore key. We'll enter into a series of hallways, drop down a hole. There will be another hallway here in front of us with a specter. So take out that specter. Ice bombs are very useful against them but it's up to you how you deal with them. And then you will walk forward and drop down another hole. Right after you drop down the, I also just figured out right then and there that you cannot uh, lock on to specters. You'll get some armor 
We're gonna ignore the Slayer Gate key and instead get the Sentinel Battery first, because, you know, we just want to be safe. Then we'll get the Slayer Gate key, then we will drop down, and a bunch of enemies will attack us, including what I believe is, like, three or four or even maybe five Arachnotrons. Uh, if you are trying to master your weapons, pay attention to what kind of enemies you're fighting against. If you're trying to master your combat shotgun sticky bombs, uh, you know, you definitely want to stick the turrets on these enemies in order to work towards that. There are some other weapons you might have that you really enjoy using, and you definitely want to pay attention to trying to master them. They're going to come in useful later. Take out all of the enemies. Once you do, do not interact with the main objective. We have some stuff to do before we leave this area. With all of the enemies taken care of, you can now jump on these sewer pipes, and at the end of the sewer pipes is a Slayer Gate door. This door is blocked off until all of the enemies are taken care of. We're going to take that Slayer Gate key, we're going to put it in the door, and you guys know what's next. We're going to go inside of the Gore Nest and have a very long battle, lasting about 3 or 4 minutes. Now the funny thing is, and you don't have to believe me, I played this Gore Nest 4 times, and out of all my times, this was the only one I recorded, and I think it was by far my worst performance. So excuse my terrible gameplay. The longer I play this game sometimes, the worse I play. Uh, there's a sweet spot somewhere in the middle from where I start in the day and from where I end. Uh, take out all of the enemies, uh, work, you know, do whatever magic you want to you wanna do. Uh, one thing I was going for were killing the big, bulky, muscly dudes with the plasma rifle because I was working towards my plasma rifle. Uh, it was either a challenge or a mastery. Not really sure. Additionally, I have my super shotgun here and the super shotgun mastery is for killing 50 people using the, the hook, which is first of all really fun, but second of all uh, a good weapon to get mastered. So I'll rejoin you with the commentary once we're done, but uh, as you see in the top right corner, these are the only three combat weapon points we still need, so after you defeat this Slayer Gate, you should be at 10 out of 10 for combat.
With the Slayer Gate done, the mission is almost complete, but as soon as you come out, let the Gore Nest explode and make sure you pick up that Empyrean key. We will need it for a super secret awesome weapon later on in the game called the Unmaker. It's also related to an achievement or trophy if that's your thing. Uh, either way, now we're ready to go towards our mission objective. Put in the blue gore key and the red gore key, which will gain us access back inside of the huge nest. The Hellified Barrier has opened. This air shaft. You'll just want to drop down inside of the facility, follow the uh, vents, drop down again, and you'll end up in the second energy or power room, and you'll be able to interact with this, which will start a cutscene, which we're going to skip for the purpose of the video. And then you can interact with the overall controls, and there will be another cutscene, which you can skip or watch on your own screen. I'm going to skip it. But as soon as that happens, we are going to have an escape sequence, and it is timed. There are 100 seconds to escape. I escape in about 50 seconds. This part isn't particularly hard, but my one piece of advice would be to just completely ignore the enemies. Uh, trying to kill all of the enemies would be a lot harder, if not impossible. And it would also uh, it would be pretty tough, because there's uh, two mancubus that spawn. I believe there's a whiplash, some tentacles. Uh, so just ignore them, honestly, and as soon as you reach the exit, the mission will conclude, but do not stop watching the video if you want some more cool tips and tricks. We're going back to the Fortress of Doom, and there are quite a few things to do there if you want to optimize your run. So we're going to get back to the Fortress of Doom now. Spawning back in the Fortress of Doom, if you want, you can just walk forward, interact with the portal, and start Mission 6. I wouldn't recommend it, because there are some things we can grab while we're here, including achievements and trophies, and including some major buffs. Turn around from where you started and go all the way to the end. Here you'll see that there's three floors, and you can spend your Sentinel batteries here in order to get unlocks. On the top floor, you get a skin of the classic Doom Slayer. On the middle floor, you can get two Modbots and two Praetor suit points. And on the bottom floor, you can get the uh, crystals, the Sentinel crystals. So spend your Sentinel batteries whatever way you like. You should have 11 if you've been following along with the video. Personally, what I would recommend is that you grab the two Sentinel crystals on the bottom. Those are always going to be the most helpful because they'll either buff your health, armor, or ammo directly. And there's also perks attributed to the crystals themselves. As I mentioned earlier, you have to get both sides of a perk for it to actually unlock. So the perks I wanted were Quick Draw Belch, Loot Magnet, and Nap Napalm Belch. This will allow me to have 3 health, 2 armor, and 2 ammo. If you, if you max out any one of those 3 stats, you'll unlock a separate achievement for doing that. You'll also unlock an achievement or trophy for spending 8 Sentinel batteries in a single save slot. Because we have 11, I'll actually be spending 10 of them. And that will allow us to uh, unlock that achievement or trophy. So that'll be something else we get. The other thing I would recommend is grabbing the two Praetor suit points in the middle. And if you have the leftover Sentinel batteries, grab the weapon mod bot as well. Or if you want, you can grab the uh, cosmetic on the top floor. And obviously, don't forget to spend all of these points. I'm going to fast forward a little bit in the video because I don't think you need to watch this part. But once you have everything unlocked and you've spent all those batteries, go into your suit, make sure you upgrade it in whatever playstyle you want to play. I decided to go with the double frag grenade upgrade, as I noticed that I was using frag grenades more and more, and having two frag grenades at once sounded a lot better than having one. Additionally, you want to make sure you are uh, using the weapon mastery system, so I decided to start leveling up um, some stuff in terms of the Ballista. I think I also leveled up uh, one of the shotguns maybe. But I spent my weapon mastery points in order to unlock those upgrades and work towards mastery on some of my favorite weapons. 
Um, you'll want to do that if you want to give yourself the best possible advantage. As soon as you're ready to end the mission, all you need to do is run over to the portal, interact with it to open it up, jump through, and you will start the next mission. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope it was useful. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. You guys know the drill. Share the video with a friend. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Shout out to Double O, and hopefully I see you next time. Peace.